The Queen of the Arctic and Greenland, the first woman to be flown over the North Pole, Louise Honor Boyd, in 1930s, opened Polesia to the world. Thanks to her, the New World and Western Europe saw a vast region of marshes and rivers in all its complexity, uniqueness and originality. The American traveler is known far beyond the borders of the United States of America, one of the ten outstanding pioneers of the world, but unfortunately we are unfamiliar with this person. In the autumn of 1934, the researchers' expedition reached Polesia. In the town on the bank of the river Pina, she stopped at the Hotel English, where the headquarters of travelers settled. She was accompanied by Polish geographers Gorzuchowski Stanislaw and Wanda Ravenska. Overland, the expedition traveled by their own car, Packard, with a personal driver, Percy R. Cameron, on the water with the assistance of the Pinsk military river flotilla. As a result, in Polesia the legendary American lady made more than 700 shots, which were later repeatedly published in journals, photo albums were exhibited, but first, things first. A squirrely girl, a rich upstart, a spender of parental millions. So initially Mrs. Louise was spoken by her friends and the scientific community, especially when in 1918 she travelled to Europe and Africa to find the Spanish flu, seeing that this terrible virus took the life of more than 60 million of people. Jan Boyd found a place of a nurse to help the sick suffered from this terrible epidemic. Away from home, Louise stayed for about a year. In 1919, she suffered a misfortune. The parents have died, and the father at the time was the owner of the gold mines in California. Millions went to the 32-year-old Louise. By this time she was the only heir, as two older brothers died young of chronic heart disease. The first expedition to the Arctic the American lady organized in 1924, after experiencing the polar ice on the Slavbard archipelago. Two years later followed the second expedition, more successful. 
More than 700 images of the Arctic were made, 11 polar bear skins were produced, and a documentary was filmed. In March 1928, the world-famous Italian airship constructor and explorer Umberto Nobili on the airship Italia began his Arctic expedition. But the final stage was a tragedy. On the 25th of May, the airship where together with Nobili were 18 people returning from the North Pole crashed. In the search for colleagues rushed to the Norwegian Polar, the explorer Roald Amundsen. But by a twist of a fate, he crushed himself. Louis Arna Boyd could not remain aloof from the problems of colleagues and went on a carted sheep hobby to search for Amundsen. Unfortunately, the attempt to save the life of the Polar has failed. The government of Norway highly appreciated the Boyd's act. She became the third woman in the world who was awarded by the Cross of the Order of St. Olaf, which is given for outstanding service to Norway and humanity. And most importantly, dramatically changed the attitude of colleagues and loved ones to Louise Boyd. She was treated with respect and reverence as they saw that millions are spent on good deeds. She proved that money can serve to science and good. In 1938, the government of the United States asked the traveler not to disclose the results of the research in Greenland and the Arctic because of the fear that Nazi Germany could use them to build military bases. In the midst of the Second World War, Louis Boyd received a special task to study in detail the magnetic field of the North Pole as the radio traffic Europe, the United States, passed through it. Successfully dealing with it, she has also prepared a report on the possible arrangement of a military airfield on the Baffin Island. After the war, Louis Anna Boyd was at the height of her fame. Government awards, public lectures, scientific conferences, but it was not enough for her, and, 67 years old, she ventured on a risky thing to do. In 1955, on an airplane Douglas DC-4, Boyd started a flight over the North Pole and became the first woman to visit the edge of the Earth. The merits and achievements of the traveler, this extraordinary personality, were so weighty and meaningful that forced to break the tradition of a purely male American geographical society. In 1960, Boyd became the first woman in the ranks of the organization which existed already for over a hundred years. In 1934, Louise Anna Boyd participated in the International Congress of Geographers, which opened on the 23rd of August in Warsaw. But this is only one of the reasons for her visit to Poland. The main purpose was to get acquainted with the Polish province, and a special interest for her represented the mysterious and unknown Polesie of Pinsk district where the researcher proceeded from Lviv through Kovel. We allow ourselves to assume whence Boyd could know about the vast region of marshes and rivers. It is likely that by emigrants from Polesia, some of whom could work in the gold mines of her father. After all, 
Since the beginning of the 20th century, from our region to the United States, left thousands of local residents, some of whom exclusively for work. But perhaps everything is much simpler. She has got some kind of scientific publication. So was it or not, but on the 29th of September 1934, Boyd, accompanied by Polish geographers Stanislaw Gorzuchowski and Wanda Rybenska, arrived at Pinsk. The travelers housed in a fashionable hotel English, which had telephones, bathrooms, garages, excellent cuisine, the more it was the very center of the city. In walking distance, Pinsk Key, Bridge over Pina, a famous water market, the so-called bargaining over Pina, market on the central square with shopping arcade in front of the church of St. Stanislaus. Near the central square based Pinsk military river flotilla, where in the workshops she could repair her car. And the commander of the flotilla expedition, Witold Zajonczkowski, gave the expedition power boats. The bridge was built in 1933 only. Before this, there was a ferry. Here you can also see the southern part of the famous Pinsk trade or marketplace, where people from villages brought by boats, fish, hay, cattle. A bit further, there was Pinsk River flotilla. Behind the bridge, there was the Pinsk Pripyat, and a bit further, the Hotel English. I have visited markets in many countries, but nowhere else have I seen so unique and interesting a sight as the Pinsk market. It is the focal point at which people who live miles apart meet, sell their wares, greet one another. Noted explorer on the 3rd of October 1934, after attending an annual autumn fair in Pinsk. By the way, in two years the fair will get on the film of Polish documentary filmmakers. When I was eight or nine years old, my mother always took me to the market with her. A lot of carts came to the square. They sold pigs, hens, geese. Everyone could buy whatever they wanted or needed. Potatoes and anything else. On the river bank, there were so many boats filled with fish that one could hardly see the bank itself. There were so many people that it was hard to walk through. The trade was very big. Now there is no such trade, and this will not happen again. Of course, people were dressed not as they are dressed now. They were poorer, but nobody was naked. All the people went to the marketplace as if it was a real holiday. There was a plenty of people. It was really interesting. Maybe it was interesting for me as I was a child. The traveler has been fascinated by the ancient Pinsk, but her main purpose was to get acquainted with the famous Pinsk marshes and their inhabitants. The marshes are commonly described as flat and monotonous in the extreme, but I did not find them so, possibly because my chief interest lay in the human element. Dwellers on and among waterways are a folk apart from the general run of people who have their feet planted on terra firma. 
wrote Boyd in the Paleski diary. On boats of Pinsk military river flotilla, Boyd headed on the Pina River towards the Garadisha Lake, the nearest city from Pinkovici, where a memorial sign in honor of her stay in the Pinsk region stands. Louise Honor Boyd made a lot of pictures. Here are local people and peasant houses and stables, haystacks, fishing tackle and still standing on the banks of the river, the church of the intercession. And in Garadisha, near the walls of the ancient Benedictine church of Saint Anne, placed on the legendary lake, Boyd captured a lot of fishing tackle and appliances by Yasilda punching way through dense marshes to Pripyat, she went to the archaic Kudrichi Kurodeva Ploshchava. This entire shallow depression is a country of forest and marsh. It is a region of ancient settlement, but man has modified the original landscape less here than elsewhere in Western Europe, noted the traveler. Amazing things are presented in the photo album of Louise Boyd. They show us Palacia, which we feel and remember. A curious fact is that when we came to these places, we were visited by our legendary American lady. We can see practically the same houses, the same way of life of the same people. We can feel the sound, feel the nature, things that she perceived. We can still observe that houses, buildings, the same people, so to say, but here and now. In the unique sceneries here feels all the primevalness of Polesia. The lands are full of unique and original beauty. And on the main river of Polesia, the Polesia Amazon, on Pripyat, the American lady saw virtually the entire spectrum of life of a Poleshuk. Scarring numerous peasant boats adapted for carriage of livestock and hay and goods and fish catching, they are the same, breaking through the coastal streams and small rivers, served as the main means of communication between settlements. Rivers and marshes are the main source of the Poleshuk's life. On Pripyat, visiting Tupchitsi, Hristobolovici and Knubovo near Pinsk, Louis Boyd captured views of the architectural delights of the capital of Polesia. Her first observations Louise Boyd published in July 1936 in journal The Geographical Review, and the result of the expedition was the publication in 1937 in New York the album Polish Countrysides. Noting the uniqueness of the region, the American lady wondered how many years it will be needed to change Polesia, the development of infrastructure to begin, the hard life of the Poleshuk to be changed, the conditions of his existence to be improved. As history has shown, not much. Already in the 60s, 
70s of the last century, the region began to change dramatically. And now it is completely different place here. That's why pictures of Louis Anne Boyd are the valuable artifact that plunge us into the history, introduce the authentic Polesia. Яна открыла Полесье не только для себе, а открыла Полесье для широкой громадкости и when she visited Polesie, she noticed all the beauty, similarity and otherness of other places. Nowadays, tourism is very urbanized, and it's thought that tourism, it is walking along the streets and squares of towns and cities where you can see various architectural and historical monuments. She, via her journey, gets us back to the times when Polesia was a real interest for the people from Poland and other countries of the world. Their real interest showed not the things you can buy here or architectural monuments you can see here, but marvelous nature with its uncommonness for other places. This place is also known for its ethnography. How could the traveler notice all this within a short period of time? How could the traveler notice all this within a short period of time? How could she fix it in her photos? There are more than 700 of them. We can only sincerely say thank for her and for all this. Louise Arna Boyd died at the great age of 85 years on the 14th of September 1972 in San Francisco. During the life bequeathed the legendary explorer her family stayed in San Rafael to the Martin History Museum and all her scientific data and photo archive to the American Geographical Society. The photographic heritage of Boyd is still keeping many unpublished sites of Polesia or Pinsk district. Louise Honor Boyd's expedition is a real history which gives us new aspects even 80 years after. In 2015, Belarus joins the perpetuation of the history of a legendary American lady, a tourist route, a memorial sign were developed, a photo album was published and the appearance of this film became possible. A good platform for cultural dialogue has been created. Louise Honor Boyd is a vivid example of cultural and historical interconnection of two countries, Belarus and the United States of America. Vivid, but not the only one, our land gave the new world many scientists, financiers, musicians, artists, and tens of thousands of emigrant workers from Polesia made a significant contribution to the development of America. This has united us forever. In 1984, in the USA city Milwaukee, with great success, was held an exhibition Polishuk as viewed by Louis Boyd, which was exhibited in Poland three years later. And in 1991, in Krakow, was released album Province, Kresis, most images of which are devoted to Pinsk district. The Polesia phenomenon is that, at all times, it, with its amazing primal mystery, attracted, attracts and will attract the attention of inquisitive researchers and all those who are inherent creativity, a thirst for new knowledge and experiences. The rest depends only on the thoughts and desires of those who want to go to Palacio Roads of Louis Boyd and discover this region for themselves.